Okay, hello everyone. Uh, we're back. And I'm hoping, this time I'm hoping we've got sound. Because unfortunately, yeah, it's happened to me a couple of times on live streaming, we've had no sound at all. So this uh, video is going to be a demonstration showing how we carve a rose. So we got it marked out using a paper template and um, we're going to see, yeah, we're going to just demonstrate how, how you can carve a rose. It's, it's an intricate carving, but it's, it's not too, nothing too complicated about it. So hopefully this will give you an, uh, an idea of the, the technique, the method that you can use. Now, slightly different to what I would normally demonstrate, because normally these bits here we would cut out using the scroll saw. But you don't have to do that. If you want to do an entirely relief carving, uh, what you can do is, is to mark out, you know, around the outside. So I wouldn't normally have to do these edges around here because they would already be marked out with the scroll saw. But there we are. It's using the hand gouges. You can, you can mark out a carving as well. So you can see, we just start to mark all of our stop cuts. So we're cutting down into the wood and we are marking that first petal. For those of you who are interested in the wood, we're using a piece of juniper, not one that is sort of recommended or anything like that for wood carving. Where we get this from is La Mancha in the middle of Spain. Um, it's actually my father-in-law, it's, it's the town where he was born, from Aragon Theo. Um, I'm hoping my wife is listening to this, so yeah, it's, it's a beautiful timber. You can see here, you get the contrast, you get the heartwood, you get the sapwood, so you get those two colours in that particular wood. Um, when it comes to the carving then, what we'd normally do, we start off in the centre, so we just do a little indent for the centre of our rows, and then we start working our way around that central rows, and then we will do our stop cuts down into the wood. That's what we're doing now. So we're doing our stop cuts, and then we'll try and get more sort of detail on on our petals. So as you can see, we've got a we got a paper template mark, marked marked. You know, to mark the rows on there, but that doesn't mean that you have to stick to using that paper template. There's no rules, there's no regulations. You can follow those guidelines if you want to, but if you would prefer to do more sort of free hands, then yeah, go for it. As we said, there are no sort of rules and regs. So what I'm thinking of doing actually, here we are, let's change from that paper drawing. I'm going to come in there like that and then I'm going to do another one. So we're just going to come inside there. I'm going to do two little petals, one at the bottom, one at the top. So yeah, already I've completely ignored the original paper design that I've drawn. And I'm going to sort of do something that more suits uh, myself. Um, the process then of carving like this, it is a, it's basically making a series of stop cuts, creating that barrier. That's the first thing then that you're doing. And depending on your carving, you know, you can sort of do it in, in different ways because um, you, you can sort of, some carvings are, are better and easier to do where you do some stop cuts and then use them as a barrier straight away. But I find with this one, that I like to mark out all of the petals, mark out all of the stop cuts, and then afterwards do all of the detail of the petals. So as you can see, 
already, whilst I've got those guidelines, I've already made my rows quite different from what those guidelines are actually telling me. It's basically as you're going along and you're looking at the shape and the form of it, you've got to decide what you want to do, what you're happy with doing, and what you would, basically what you would like to do. So we've started mainly in and around that centre, and I'm adapting my design as I go along. If you're learning carving, it's probably easier to stick to a design, to, to a drawing, because you're learning a lot of things when you're first carving. Other things as well, if you're learning to carve, you've got things like the, the tools. So if you're doing a carving like this, instead of taking a particular shape and just sticking to carving that design, what you need to try and do is to adapt your artwork, adapt the design to suit the gouges that you actually have. So for example, what I mean by that, this design, this rose that I'm carving, it is to suit and the adaptions, the changes that I'm making as I'm going along, I'm doing it to suit my gouges. If you have larger gouges, things like these ones here, then you want to design your rose to be larger, excuse me, because it will suit the, the tools that you have, it will suit them that much, that much better. So having that sort of flexibility, you, you have to sort of work according to the tools that you have, as opposed to trying to get the tools to, to do the shape and style that, you know, of your artwork. It's basically what I'm trying to get at, develop your artwork in accordance to the tools that you have, as opposed to trying to force the tools to fit with the artwork. It's just how you, you organize it. So you can see we're starting to get the shape of our rows. And that's what our stop cuts are doing. It's creating that barrier. It's creating that effect that we want in, in the wood itself. We're using mainly this, this gouge here. This is a Herring Brothers gouge, a vintage tool. Beautiful for, for, for working in. And um, lovely steel, you can get a really good edge on it. In terms of sharpening, we use a Tormek. And for doing a rose, it's, it's great. You can see we, we do some of our cuts where we're facing it that way, and then the rest of the cuts this way. So that gives us a nice shape on, on the petals. As we mentioned, normally these ones on the outside, we'd already have cut out on the scroll saw. But it's good for you to see anybody learning how you do it sort of completely relief. You just keep building up those petals and a rose then, the petals sort of form, they form layers. So those layers, they're gonna be uh, overlapping one another. You may notice as well that I'm sort of actually making my petals, I'm making them a little bit more pointy than the actual drawing. And I think that's, it's nice if you can do that because it gives it a really lovely shape. So we're nearly finished on the petals down the bottom. I'm going to change for a smaller one to get a steeper angle. <coughs> Excuse me. But you can see, for doing a carving like this one here, anyone sort of starting off, quite often people are worried about, well, oh, how many gouges do I need? How many tools are going to be necessary for, for doing um, any sort of hand carving. You don't need lots and lots of tools. This has all so far been done using three different shape gouges. And I have demonstrated on some of the videos how you can get away with very few gouges. Indeed, you can do a lot of carving with just say one or two gouges. The main thing when you're learning, it's, it's time. That is the biggest factor when it comes to learning wood carving, is spending time with the tools. And that's interesting for anyone to know. That one, because it's a small piece, that's just shifted. 
that bit there has just shifted. So I noticed it has shifted. So straight away, to stop that becoming a problem, straight away, I'm just going to take a bit out like that, just to strengthen up that barrier. I just noticed the wood shifting across. And that's a sign then that it's, it's moving, that it's not stable. So just by immediately doing that, hopefully that'll sort the problem out. So that's why I've gone and done that, is I just noticed it shifting across. It's basically because there's not a lot of wood supporting between where I've done that stop cut and where I've done that stop cut. It just moved across. Just a sign that it's, that's not, not a good sign then in terms of the stability. So best to deal with it straight away as opposed to leaving it. So we've got, yeah, our one stop cut just by here, that angle just in there to do. And then we've got the one at the top, and that will give us the shape of our rows. So we've used the combination of improvising our lines, as well as following the lines that we've been given. Because for instance, this one here, I'm gonna come in to that point there, and maybe and maybe I'll use the smaller one just to finish off. Because the top one, we want a nice shape on that one there. So again, we're improvising here. I want a nice strong bit because you've got to think when we, you know, when we do, if we do, which we which we will, we will scroll saw this. You want strength in the design. So you've always got to be thinking, how do I retain, how do I retain that strength? There we are. So I'm thinking now, yeah, we've got a nice shape overall there. Because we've done different to us, these sort of stop cuts, I'm gonna start off by coming round the outside. So we're just taking a little bit of wood, and as I'm doing that then, we're cutting into the stop cut, using it as a barrier. And you can see that beautiful juniper color coming through, and there's, Another thing, if you ever get the chance to work with juniper, it's a beautiful perfume, really, really strong perfume that you get from it, but a lovely smell uh, that you actually get from working in the juniper. Other things then, the wood has been marked out. We would mark a, a carving like this, it would be marked out using a vertical grain. So if you've got a vertical grain on it, it's, it's preferable. Not as crucial with a rose because we've got petals going in different directions. But this, it is a love spoon. And so a love spoon, ideally you want it with a vertical grain. So where we start to cut into those edges, the, there is a little bit of wood left over. And the way we get rid of that then, we just make our stop cut deeper. Go back over then, just carve into that stop cut. Because our stop cuts, that, that's where we cut down into the wood. That's a stop cut. It's just the technical name for it. And that acts as our barrier. So that is what we're using to cut down into the wood itself. There we go. So we just tidy up that stop cut, just like so. As you can see. There we are. I don't know if you just picked up on there. There's Dad just coming in now. And he's going to demonstrate for us later. We did say we were going to do a demonstration using the coping saw. So when I finish demonstrating the rows, I'm hoping that he'll, uh, he'll demonstrate that for us. Yeah, I'm going to show you how to do it properly. He's going to show us how to, do, how to do it properly. There we are. Yeah, so you can see we're just carving into those stop cuts there. Interestingly, we just lost, as I turn to look at Dad, I've just lost a little bit of that barrier there, but that won't matter because we're gonna carve into there anyway. So that's the start of our first petal, just in like so. And I may actually, it's interesting, as I'm doing this, I'm thinking to myself, um, initially I said we'll, afterwards, we'll go over it and scroll sort it out. I may actually leave this all solid like all solid all in and around the flower normally see we would use the coping saw to just cut around there to give you a bit of light and shade but I'm, I'm thinking that that's quite nice for a change somebody coming in the workshop here may 
not that we're seeing a lot of people at the moment, but um, somebody might like that, you know, that it's a bit different to what we, we normally do. They may prefer that style. So or we're always open to different things, different ideas. So, so far, we're getting that outside shape. We've got all of our stop cuts and that's our first petal now. And you can see what you're doing for making a rose shape. Because you have those petals on a rose that sort of um, drop behind one another, you can get that shape, a nice sort of shape on it where they're overlapping. It's creating that effect of all of the petals are overlapping one another. So again, we do the same with this one. And we're sort of working down at an angle. So the outside petals, the outside petals go behind, go behind the, the sort of inner petals. So that's the effect that we're trying to create. I think what I will do is to carry on doing the bottom of the flower. So trying to complete that. Trying to complete that where we've got all of the uh, detail done on the bottom of the flower. And then I'll turn it around in the vise and I'll work on the, uh, the top of the flower. But hopefully for anybody interested in having a go at carving, a rose. Hopefully this will give you an idea of how you can go about sort of working on, on that process. For anybody who did look earlier as well, we had a few problems with the sound. I'm going to check with Dad, was everything okay on the sound? I think so. Yeah? Yeah. So we've got the, uh, the sound okay this time, which is useful. So yeah, you can see it's working on these petals. Now, what you'll also notice as I carve in this side, the wood is a different colour. And what that is, with the juniper, you get the contrast. You get the heartwood and you get the sapwood. You get the two colours in the one piece of wood. It gives you beautiful contrast. You get like a creamy white, creamy sort of off-white colour for the sapwood and then the heartwood goes from sort of almost purples to reds and oranges, that sort of thing. Not dissimilar to the U, but it is um, slightly different and softer than the U, well, most of the U's, softer than the U's to carve. And um, as we mentioned, you get that beautiful perfume on the wood as well. So as you can see there, we're starting to build up that shape. And what I will do as well, I will bevel the edges, the outside edges. I will come the other way with the carving and bevel the edges just to finish off. And we've got some shellac on the bench there. So the idea with the shellac, we put a couple of coats of shellac on. And that will uh, hopefully bring out the character in the wood and bring out the character in the ground. It's a process, really, of trying to give depth to the carving and create that effect that those petals, that they're overlapping one another. Which is not the most, it's not the most difficult of carvings. It's relatively straightforward. And, of course, there are other ways of doing the, the rows. You know, I've seen them where people overlap them and things like that. All sorts of techniques. People do more sort of three-dimensional roses, that sort of thing as well. So there's all sorts of different ways of doing it and techniques. And that's the beauty of wood carving then, is to play around with different approaches and to find out what suits you best. As we come over here again, we're into the sapwood. So as we carve that slightly different feel to carving the sapwood, than carving the heartwoods. Often the sapwood is a little bit, a little bit sort of softer, but it's both parts with the juniper are nice for, for working in. You just got a little bit of wood there, that's him. He's gone, didn't want to come away, but you've just got to do a little bit of work just to get rid of it. 
and then we're coming down the side there. So we're very much building up that shape of a rose. As we've mentioned in other videos as well, it's a lovely process, lovely material for, for working in. We use all sorts of different timbers. One wood I would like to carve this in, it would be um, rosewood, because of course being a rose, and it would give you a beautiful deep sort of reddish purple colour. I know there's no link between rosewood and roses, but uh, it would be nice just to give it a... Can I sing now? You want to sing, do you? There is a rose in Spanish Harlem. We've got impromptu singing by Thomas the Woodcarver in the background here. So you can see we're working on that outside petal. There, we're just getting a little bit of the wood, just chewing a little bit. We're just going to tidy that up. That's it. Just go more, a little bit deeper into that stop cut. Same again, into the edge, using that stop cut as a barrier. Just cutting in like so. An interesting video as well that I filmed recently, I was looking at um, tools and the theme for the, the video, because I know a lot of people are interested in the tools, we get asked a lot of questions by people learning wood carving about the tools. And I thought I'll do a video, we just refocus that camera two seconds so the live view doesn't go off. Yeah, um, we were, were doing a video, we were filming it this week and we were actually looking because we use vintage ones like herring brothers we use addis um different ones like that and we were doing a video saying about why we use those and i was actually carving them with a set a relatively inexpensive set of modern marples and the gist of the video was sort of saying about how oh you know the older tools they're better better quality they do a better job for us, that sort of thing. And that was sort of the message behind it. But one thing I've got to say is I was quite surprised at how good the modern marbles, they, they actually did a far better job than I was expecting. So not, not the result I was expecting. They were perfectly, they would have been perfectly good for anybody to, to learn with. The one thing I would say to qualify that is that we had sharpened them on the Tormek. So that may have made well that would have made a big big difference to them but just to say that you know with tools and things like that if you're learning wood carving whatever you've sort of got available that's the best sort of thing to to work with it's i wouldn't worry too much about having the best tools starting off there's so much to learn that you can very much yeah make good progress and learn most things with pretty sort of simple, inexpensive tools. There we are. We're nearly finished in terms of working our way into the center, just like so. We're just taking out a little bit of detail on this one here. If you're wondering why we're doing this live stream now, uh, we did film it this morning. When I checked it, we had no sound. So, never good if we're explaining a technique and a method and you can't actually uh, hear us. So, that's why we've refilmed it, is so you can hear what we're doing. We're just pretty much there when it comes to actually getting all of the petals done. The next thing I'm going to do now is to just demonstrate. We're going to take off what's left of the paper. So just tidy it all up. But you can see carving a rose is very much a process of those carving fundamentals. You do all of your stop cuts down into the woods. And then afterwards you use that stop cut as a barrier. You try as... We always say for a love spoon to mark it out with a vertical grain, but I don't think it's as critical with a, a rose carving, a relief rose carving, because you've got petals going in different directions. So sometimes you're going to be carving with the grain, and sometimes you're going to be carving against the grain. 
across it, that sort of thing. So you can see we're just tidying up these petals. And then afterwards, in terms of finishing, you can do a bit of sanding if you want to. You don't have to, no rules or eggs. But this one's a popular symbol on the love spoon. We basically, there are different interpretations, as always, with different symbols. One interpretation we use for a flower is that you hope love will blossom or continue to blossom. Just checking. That's all of our cuts in the one direction. So I'm going to swing it round the other way, like so. And we're going to finish off all of these petals. But yeah, wood carving, lovely process, lovely material to work in. And for anybody who's interested in learning it, remember, you can get all sorts of... Uh, different styles and things like that. If you're learning carving and you're having any difficulty, remember you can, you can get in touch. You can put a comment in the comment section below. Tell us if you're struggling with a particular thing, tell us what it is and we'll do a video and hopefully try to help you out. I can just see a few little bits of wood left on that stop cut there. So we'll take those away. Same, we're gonna take that little bit there, just tidying that up. I'm going to finish on the top of the petal, just like so. In terms of what we've got coming up on the channel as well, we're going to be doing um, our, our documentary. That's all ready to go. That'll be published maybe at the end of September, the start of October, around that sort of time. Um, We've got a video coming up on mental mental health and wood carving. We've got some... It's very therapeutic. It is, yeah, lovely material, lovely process. We've got as well our live streams. We're going to do one on designing love spoons. That'll be an interesting one. We were looking for symbols from yourselves. So if anyone's got any thoughts on symbols <coughs> they'd like to see on a love spoon we design, put those in the comment section and... Uh, we'll incorporate them into, into a design. There we are, so we're just gonna just go over that a little bit, just to smooth, smooth that over just a touch. But that is a very basic demonstration of how to carve a rose in wood. I like this wood for doing a rose in because you do, you get the, that contrast of the heartwood and the sapwood, which I think adds a, Another little element to the carving. And as I sand it, we get a bit of a blast of that beautiful perfume from the, the juniper. It's recycled wood. And that's what a good source then for getting the timber from. Here we are, Dad's waiting in the wings here. Have you got some shellac that we can just put on? Yep, we're all ready to go. Here we are. So if you put a little bit of, uh, I'll stand out the way. Dan's going to put some shellac on there for you to see. Well, I've got to inspect it first. Here we are. Are you happy with that one? Well, no comment. It'll do, is it? Well, I'm happy with it. Put it in the comments section below. Are you happy with it? What do you think? Put a comment in there. Is it a, is it a nice rose or not? This is the thing. We've done a few different styles. Uh, very popular on bespoke love spoons, that sort of thing. You quite often, you get quite a lot of love spoons in and there's an English-Welsh couple, so it's, it's one that's very popular for... We wouldn't normally do this. No, we, we would normally... Finish the... Finish but, it, it's, but it's very this. much for everyone to see. Look at how that beautiful wood, that beautiful grain, you get that fantastic character of the juniper coming through and that fantastic contrast of the sapwoods. That's just the sapwood there, and this is the heartwood, the darker wood there. There we are, right. Have you but, said what shellac are you using? Uh, we use Fiddy's shellac. Fiddy's yeah. shellac, um, yeah. There's a Fiddy's factory up in Cardiff. That's yes, right, isn't it? So we use Fiddy's shellac. It's called shellac sand and seal. Shellac yeah. sand and sealer, that's what, that's what we use it. There we are, what we're gonna do now, um, we're gonna finish off 
I'm going to move the camera around and to finish off, Dad's going to give us a demonstration. He's going to give us his coping saw masterclass. Yeah, this, so this, this, this is fantastic. it now. This is the... Right, know. I'm going to have to do a little bit of a, a rejig. Okay. Uh, for you to know, that's where your microphone is there. Okay, so that's yeah. your microphone. Just to explain, it's really very difficult because um, he's uh, put the microphone almost on top of my seat. But there we are. Right, I'm hoping that that won't affect I'm hoping that that won't affect the, um, um, just going to a bit space. I'm just going to readjust that up to about there, refocus it, and I'm going to, I'm going to zoom out because we should be able to get more, more in shot. There we are. I'm hoping, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, yeah, we should. We should be pretty good for being in focus there. So I hope you haven't lost you all. There we are. Right. So, yeah. Any chance of moving the microphone just a little bit back okay. so we, I can... We'll try and move this microphone to slightly in front of yourself. There we are. A bit easier. There we are. That's uh -huh. just, just yeah, like yeah. so. And I'm going to re... Refocus. If you could drop your arms down, drop your arms down, drop your arms down. That's it. Brilliant. There we are. So we got you refocus and hopefully can we're I, ready to go. Can yeah. I pick, pick my arms up now? Yeah, you can start. You can start okay. using the coping. So I should grab my drink. Okay. I so, sh should explain. This this is a piece of oak. So unlike the previous love spoon that Dave was making. Um. The wood he was using was a lot softer, but I've got the oak. He's given me the hard stuff. Well, the, the, the truth is, is that um, we demonstrated this earlier, but no sound came through. Um, yeah, so we've had to do it again. And earlier, earlier he had a lovely easy piece of teak, but that, that didn't happen, so we had to, we've had to do it again. Just to explain then, if you want to just stop a second, just to explain, excuse me, what we've done, a um, couple of things then in terms of setup. You've got the two pins, two pins at the back here. Make sure when you're using the coping saw that they're lined up. If you notice as well, the reason I've given Dad this demonstration is because he is far better at using the coping saw than myself. So you notice that that is, is pretty much 90, degree, 90 degrees, it's parallel. So it, you, that is one thing you've got to constantly be watching for is to keep that coping saw parallel um, and then interestingly with this some people find it easier with the teeth in in that formation running that way and then others find it easier with them running the other way so there we are any anything you want to add to, um, to that? Uh, I generally could do. Yeah. Once I'm doing the difficult bit, yeah. as usual, you could get a drill so we could drill a hole out for the centre so we can show everybody how... Yeah, if you can just explain as well to everyone. Dad will explain a little bit of the technique things to avoid doing and also not just things to avoid but how how to get the, the coping saw to cut at its best and I, I'll be back now I'll get a I will get a hand through. Yeah most important thing of all is to get the blade to do the work. Just relax the saw don't don't force it like that you know because that's what happens it'll go wrong. So you, you can actually turn a corner with a coping saw, very similar to the scroll saw, just keep working, go back a little bit, and then you can actually turn. I mean, that's a complete U-turn now on this. So we're coming down, make enough space in there, and actually turn it round. But again, relax that saw. Don't if, force it. If you force it, the, the blade then tends to, it'll bend. Um, it'll also, it'll drift and things like that. And you you won't get a good cut, basically, yeah. will you? No. There we are. I brought the, the drill in. Another time, we'll have to show you, because 
years ago, I think that's far enough down there. What do you think? Okay, okay. well, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to come out from the side now, then. There we are. I think so you can see us coming out. So what Dad's going to do, he's going to demonstrate um, an internal cut, how you do the, the in, internal cuts using the coping saw. Interesting yeah. thing, you may have picked it up on the audio there, that the um, the sound actually changes the pitch of the the, the saw as it's cutting. It'll actually change um, as it sort of gets closer to, to breaking through, to cutting right the way through the wood. So what he's going to do, we've actually got a wheel brace. Just thinking now as we're talking, um, nice video we'll have to do, maybe around <coughs> Christmas or something, is to show everybody, we'll show everybody the um, some of the old tools we got. Because we've got all sorts here. We've got yeah. a wheel brace, we've got the granny's tooth, we've got the... Now as you can see, um, Dave, Dave's got me the drill, but you just can't get the staff today. Because you need a bigger drill. I need a bigger drill. Ah, oh, look, here we are. look at this. You just, honestly, you just can't get the staff. This is, this is great organisation. I've got to go in next to one and find a drill, haven't I? I'll tell you what, you, you go and find a drill bit and I'll, uh, ah, there we I'll are. get this one ready. Okay. Yeah, so what it is, we need to, we need to drill the hole just in there like so. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's the next part of it. Yeah, going back to what I was talking about, we can uh, do a video maybe closer to Christmas and we'll have a look, we'll share with you some of the old tools that we've got because we've got a compass plane, we've got a few different moulding planes, um, some quite old things like the, the spoke shaves and things like that. So we've got quite a range of unusual, um, unusual kits that we've collected over the years, not just our, our gouges, because of course we've got a fair few of those as well. There we are. Now in the we good are. old days, I would have used a wheel brace for this. That's what I just explained. Okay. Yeah, you explained There we that. are. Boy, I don't like to drill that through. I like to put a piece of backing on there. Do there we are. Do you, want okay? hold, do you want me to hold a piece of Thank you. Out? Yeah. There we are. I'd normally put it in the vice, because I don't want the... There we go. You can see the... Beautiful. There we are. We're through there. Yeah, basically, the reason you can use you couldn't use that drill bit there is it's, it's too small for the pins on the um, on the coping saw. So on the coping saw blade, yeah. so it, it wouldn't have gone through. Um, there we are. So you can see now popping the blade in there. There we go. Close it back up. It's good though, see, that we have these different things with it because people know that, you know, we're not sort of set up. We're, we're very much, we used to doing live demonstration things like that, but you, you'll have to bear with us because we're a bit, what's the word, ad hoc? Disorganised. Disorganised. There That's we are, we're with that. Um, no, I've changed, the, I've changed the pins, but they're still parallel. Yeah. Okay. So you've moved them yeah. around to about 90 degrees. Um, and you did have, did you bring it in? Because we did have the fret saw. The difference between the fret it's, saw it's on and the, the coping it's on saw. The counter over there. Yeah. Here we go. Difference between fret saw and the coping saw. We try and show that to the camera. That's that's your that's your fret saw. So you can see a much bigger loop. So that's the limitation of the coping saw, is the, the sort of height. Of the of the bow then on the, on the back, so that that's a bit of a limitation that's right. with it. Yeah. So that's um, that's one part you've got there, and then you can see this one here is an interesting one. What's that? A, a bow saw or what yeah. would you call that one? Yeah, yeah, a bow saw. So as I say, we do another video because we've got all sorts of different kit here. A lot we don't use. Did you like my singing, Yali? I hope she enjoyed the singing. Um, so yeah, you can see some basics of the skills, some different different methods that we use. I'm going to straighten it back up. Yeah. Because I prefer it like that. That's better now. Hopefully then, hopefully the different ideas and the different things that we're doing, hopefully it's useful. And remember, you've got the comments section, you've got the live chat and things like that. Get those comments in, get those ideas in, because we'd be delighted to do some videos to help everybody out in you know doing whatever projects you're working on. Anything you'd like to learn about wood carving or what we're doing, anything about the love spoon, 
Yeah, share your thoughts with us. We'd be delighted to do it. We've got that one coming up, live stream of, of how to design a spoon. We're going to focus on animal relief carving. We're going to focus on some so, wildlife yeah, flowers. Important yeah. bit coming up, dear. Right, here we are, everybody. This now is, listen as this well. Is it. If you listen to the change of tone, change of pitch. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, so it just changes. Job. As it gets close to cutting that final bit, you'll just notice the change in, in pitch of the, the sound. So there we are. That is a demonstration of the, the coping saw. Hopefully that's useful. It goes on to, it, it basically that idea came from Dennis, I think it was. He was asking how we get our spoons ready for carving. So last week we demonstrated the uh, head nut. That's our main method. We had a bit of an issue with a wobbly tripod though. Uh, it's just the vibration of the machine. And then this is how we do it then with the coping saw. Hopefully as well. The center out there. There we are. So hopefully some of those ideas are useful. Hopefully the rose one as well. Hopefully that's useful seeing that carving. That's gonna be the main focus of our live streams is actually showing you how we carve different things. Because that's what we basically spend most of our t time doing is, is carving stuff. But we can do other live streams on tools, on whatever. We can have discussions about stuff, whatever is useful to, to everybody else. Here we are, I think that's enough um, coping this all. He's cutting me off in my prime again now. <laughs> Somebody is, uh, Somebody's in, enjoying themselves working with a coping saw. Oh, what a job. Do you want me to stop now, then? I think it's best if you stop now. Yeah, and uh, to be honest, Sue, as well, if you look, you're starting to drift a little bit there. So. Oh, there we are. There, there we, we are. are. Yeah, um, hopefully that's useful. Hopefully it's interesting. Uh, get those comments in. Tell us the things that you'd like us to sort of focus on. Tell us the... Uh, areas of wood carving, love spoon carving, spoon carving that you'd like us to, to, to put more attention into and um, we'd be more than happy to, to make a video. And any other songs? Sing. Any other songs you'd like you to sing? got any requests from yeah. Thomas the Woodcarver, he's more than happy to sing. I'd rather you didn't request that personally but if you do want to request more as long as we don't infringe any copyrights we're, we're more than happy for okay. to sing a song. Okay, Dave. There we are. Thank you all for Thank you all for, for watching, and uh, as always, we'll be back again soon with more videos. Thank you all. Thomas is going to play us out using the coping saw.